Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Hard 100, a video series documenting the culling of my collection down to a mere 100 games. There are a few themes that I am a sucker for, and the board game market is saturated? Is that the word I'd want to use? Saturated with this theme. I'll give you a second. Is it either A, zombies, B, fantasy, or C, the game we're gonna look at today, Cthulhu and Pocket Madness. Cthulhu's Pocket Madness, a horribly fun game. Two prolific designers that I think have worked together before, Bruno Cathala and Ludovic Montblanc. Nailed it. Close your eyes, flawless French. They have also made Dice Town, although the names are reversed. And Dice Town is a fantastic family game. It doesn't even have an age on it, it just has family game. Awesome. They've made Dice Town. They've also made Pocket Madness. Pocket Madness is a Cthulhu game in which you are essentially playing some kind of a rummy variant. You're trying to get three of a kind. Hmm, you're, hmm, fuck, how am I explaining this? Pocket Madness is a very easy game to teach, an easy game to learn if you have a basic concept of kind of how, no. Fuck. Pocket Madness is a very easy game to learn and an easy game to play. We managed to play this four times in a row. We just kept having fun with it. And here's the way that it works. What you do is you have a handful of portal cards, each with a different Lovecraftian person on it and a special ability. You set those to the side. And then you do what is probably the most maddening thing, and where I think the game gets its name, that you will ever have to do as a gamer. You take your cards, these tarot cards. I love the size of tarot cards, and the art. The art's beautiful, but we'll get to that. You're gonna take these cards, and you're gonna count off 17 of them. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your deck, you're gonna flip it face up, and you're gonna take these, and you're gonna put them face down. You're then gonna shuffle this deck. So where some of the cards are face up, and some of the cards are face down. See, I can't even... I can't even, ugh, I can't even have it in my box that way. Oh, okay. It is, ooh, it is so maddening to do it that way. But you know it's part of the game and I, I can't help but think that they were chuckling to themselves a little bit whenever they knew that gamers were gonna have to do that, especially some of the more uh, retentive gamers, if you know what I mean. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna spread the cards out. And on your turn, you're gonna do a very simple thing. You're either gonna draw one to three cards from the pile you're gonna play cards from your hand in the form, it's called melding. You're gonna play cards from your hand, pairs of three, pairs of three, pairs of three. I'm gonna own it, pairs of three. You're gonna put three of a kind down, you can do up to three sets of three, and when you play that down, you get access to a special ability. So you take a card from the portal gods and you put it in front of you, you can use that at any time you want. Or you can play a run of cards from six to 12. And in this game, it's a very clever situation where there are six sixes, seven sevens, eight eights, nine nines, 10 tens, 11 elevens, 12 twelves. So you're gonna see a lot of 12s and a lot of 11s. And whenever you play a run of cards, all other players take a little green cube that is delicious looking, don't eat it. And then the, if someone does it again in a round, everyone takes two and then three, and et cetera, the first person to 10 loses. Or the game can end whenever the cards in the middle run out and for every card you have in your hand, you get a green madness cube. And at that point, the game's pretty much over and whoever has the most is the loser. Or if you run it out of all your cards completely, every other person who still has cards in your hand gets a cube for that. And the game's usually over because there's no hand limit in this game. And so when you're running, you have all the cards in the world trying to figure out how to do it. So it's pretty fun. You play three cards down to get access to powers, then that gives you access to be able to play the runs and <laughs> uh, and lets you play this through in a kind of rummy style game. This is very similar in ways to another game that I own, Lost and Riley. Now, even to the point where they are both Cthulhu themed and Lost and Riley, or Riley, is also beautiful art. Oh, these shuffle a lot nicer. And then depending on how many of a certain type of card you lay down, you are getting access to special abilities. It's very fun. I like this one too. And at the end of the day, you might think there can be only one rummy style tarot Cthulhu game. But as we mentioned at the top of the show, I'm a sucker for this kind of stuff and I love them all. They're all here. Pocket Madness is a game that we played, as I mentioned, four times. I lost this game in three minutes the first time we played it because he managed to get a run the first hand. Ah! Uh, and then we played again, and then again, and then again. It was just, it was fun, it was silly. You just kind of have this, uh, what am I gonna do? And 
It also kind of reminds me of another game called Lost Cities, which is you trying to get certain numbers and certain orders to do things. But the fact that this game is so small, it's just a deck of cards. It's amazing what you can do with just a deck of cards. That's it. Just one deck of cards and some little cubes to keep track of stuff. I don't know how they do it. Bruno and Ludovic. Ludovic. I can't imagine. I don't understand how you sit down at a table and... Side note, this theme could be anything, honestly. Pocket madness, pocket fantasy, pocket space, pocket anything. I'm surprised there's not more pocket stuff. How do you sit down at a table with your fellow Frenchman and you say, we's going to make a game. It's a flawless French accent if you couldn't tell. And then you end up with this. And also, who was my artist? I gotta find an artist. I need to give a shout out to Matthew Len... Mm. Matthew? Matthew Lesene. Nailed it. Also, the graphic design is really good, but FunForge did the graphic design for this. They must have more in-house people. The art on here will draw you in. It's not gross or anything. It's super cartoony. It's super silly. So you sit down with a game like this, and you come up with an idea. You think, Rummy Plus. Rummy Plus this. And then this. And then that. I, I don't understand how they can do it. Just It seems to come so easily to some people who make some fantastic game. I know some people may think that the Cthulhu theme or the Lovecraft theme, the mythos, is played out. If they keep making games that are this fun, who cares? A zombie game? Who cares if it's a zombie game if it's fun? Who cares if it's a fantasy game if it's fun? This is fun! It's fun! It's fun! This game is most likely going to come with me to work. And I think this would be a really good lunchtime game because let's do some housekeeping. 30 minutes. Every, even our longest game only went like 20 minutes. Two to four players. There are some take that cards when it comes to powers and it's not mean by any stretch of the imagination. I don't think the game would suffer from being two to four players. If anything, I'll have more of a time to think and won't be getting yelled at for APing. And then here we go. Eight plus, eight plus, awesome. It's a small box, it's a small footprint. It's gonna take the place of something. It's just so fun, man. Who knew that drawing cards to give you and doing one of two things with them, either playing those cards to get a special ability to use or playing those cards to make someone else start to lose the game more. And those two simple things and a deck of cards. That's all it is. That's insane to me. This is a deck of cards. This is good. Who made this? Atlas Games and Kendrick Winks and Kelly Hensling. This isn't a review for this, so we'll put whatever. But this, if you can find this, I got this game for five damn dollars at a game shop in Dallas. Are you kidding me? Go find this game. It's great. Some people may foo poo it, but it's super cheap. It's fun. This is a game you can keep in your literal pocket. Hold on, let me. You can keep it in your literal pocket and it's gonna shake a little bit. It's awesome. This is genuinely a game that can fit in your pocket that you can take to work. It's a, it's a deck of cards and some cubes. The cubes are delicious. Don't eat them. It's going in guys. This one's going in. Cthulhu's Pocket Madness, a horribly fun game, is indeed horribly fun. Once again, my name is Billy. This is definitely going on my shelf. It can go really anywhere because the box is like super small, so I guess. It can go up there where Harbor used to be. Again, my name is Billy. Thank you so much. If you enjoy that, pick it up because it might be good for your shelf. It's definitely good for mine. If you see it missing in the future, that means I took it to work. In the meantime, peace out. Have a good one.